concept in Canadian politics. Of... Pay no attention to the bridge behind the curtain. Yeah, and speaking of the bridge behind the curtain, hello everybody, and welcome to three, the third session of Star Trek October, uh, a Star Trek Adventures actual play. Uh, we are set in the year 2414 aboard a brand new specialized starbase uh, in the far reaches of the Sabine Expanse. And if you notice my players, it's because they're the same ones you saw in Fenrir. Similarly, this game is in the same quote-unquote canon as Fenrir, Matahari, and Groundskeepers, but you don't really need to have watched any of those to enjoy this one. But if you want to play catch-up, the VODs are on YouTube and most of the popular podcasts, podcast solutions. Uh, two announcements this week before we do uh, introductions. Uh, first is that I am doing a Extra Life campaign that will stretch through September on through to November. Um, specifically for the month of September, I will be donating 25% of my bits and subs to the cause, in addition to whatever you lovely people out there do. Um, but that sort of leads into my second announcement, is that on Twitch right now, for the month of September, uh, it is September, meaning that your new subs are 20% off, even if you've subbed in the past. And if you prepay up to six months, then you get 30% off. Um, so it might be something you might want to look into. Uh, the links for that should be below the stream. Uh, but with that said, let's go around and have everyone introduce themselves, starting with our captain. Hey, everybody. I'm Dag. I am your Zaldan Captain Kijwick. I hope I live through the night. If you want to hang out, check me on Twitter at TrekNexus. All right. Normally, we'd go to John. John here. Oh, John is here. <laughs> uh, I play... Uh... Oh, Jara Terrell, uh, the pilot of the Deep Space October's extra craft. And uh, he's, you know, started to come across as a little bit of a pain in the ass to certain individuals on the ship. But, you know, it's the way it goes. <laughs> that is all. <laughs> all right, Matthew, you're up next. Hello, everyone. I'm Matthew. I play uh, Jana, a uh, Cation lieutenant who is uh, chief of operations or chief engineer of the Starbase. He is Jaro's best friend, and uh, well, he's a little bit anxious about his posting. All right. Then we have Aaron. Hey, guys. I'm Aaron. Uh, I play Dr. Keeb Dottig, the Tellarite chief medical officer for Deep Space October in the USS Howe. Um, although in this session, at least for part of it, I will be playing the part of Lieutenant Jared Dorset, the operations officer for October. He's human. All right. And then and Watney. Hi, I'm Watney. I play the half Betazoid, half human chief of station security, Lieutenant Commander Arzu Stetko. You can find me on Twitter at Doc Watney. All righty. Let's go ahead and run our shiny introduction. And on the subject of creepy things, welcome back. So uh, something I like doing uh, from my Star Trek Adventures games is having the players do an opening log. And today is a little bit of a special case, but Dag, I think you might have something for us. <sighs> Captain's log, supplemental. As we prepared to lock down the station for a pending neutronic storm, we were warned that a secret group known only as The Hand might be heading our way to steal precious cargo, specifically biomimetic gel. Only a few hours before the storm was slated to hit, 
we found ourselves in the midst of a mystery, internal communications blackouts, erased computer logs, and missing personnel. Elevating our alert status, we discovered an anomaly in DSO's lower cargo bay. And like an old man, I was caught off guard. Now my team stands before a changeling, intent unknown. But if it wants a fight, we're gonna give it one. All righty. So where we last left off is where we resume. We go to one of the cargo bays in the lower reaches of DSO. And in that cargo bay are several important things. Obviously, you have Kijwick, Jenkins, Dorset, Stetko. You also have what used to be uh, or a changeling masquerading as Lieutenant Jaro. Uh, but there's also not just the changeling to worry about. You have several barrels of biomimetic gel, highly explosive, by one of the cargo doors. So keep that in mind. Um, you also have a number of... Um, shall we say, interesting things in the boxes and containers around you. But I think the main concern is the changeling ahead of you. So uh, we're going to actually go straight into structured combat um, in a way that will maybe let the players move first. Uh, but let me get everyone on the turn order and then I'll explain. All right. So normally the players would go first in terms of actions here. However, uh, John, if you want to spend two threat to let the changeling go first, you can do so. No, no, we'll let the players go first. Okay, in that case, it is either Jenkins, Kiswick, Dorset, or Stetko that is going first. Blast him. Blast him. Um, if, if, is like erecting a force field around the changeling a move or not? It would be, yes. And I'd be rolling what? I, uh, I would say that. probably presence security. Uh, and the difficulty would probably be a two. Station assist on that? That's what I was thinking. I'm thinking this, the, let's see, let's do computers and security for the station. Um, but do remember, because of the storm, there is a greater complication range. All right. Okay. I'll roll uh, for the station. I would like to. She's going to pull her phaser out. It's a computer. You erected. don't have a phaser. You threw I don't it at Kijwick. Yeah, she doesn't time. have another phaser. She's going to throw uh, it thumbs up. Uh, unfortunately not. Okay. In that case, she's just going to ask the computer to erect a force field. All righty. Presence security. Yep. Can I buy an extra die? Mm -hmm. You momentum? have two momentum. And I have star based security systems. That would apply most definitely. Um, wow. Damn. That's wow. Mm. Someone want to get, uh, wow. Wow. <laughs> All right. Finally. So that is uh seven successes, which means you are capped <laughs> on momentum. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> it's so, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Stetco, uh, keys in her security code over the comms and, uh, immediately a force field, uh, erects around the changeling. And I'm going to spend two of my threat to create a complication in that, yeah, a force field does erect around the changeling. However, it also traps Stetco and Dorset in there as well. Okay. Well, uh, you Four know, ranges. at least he's contained. Yeah. So uh, at this point, uh, Dorset will look at Stetco and say, I'm sorry, Commander. I've had a work order in for these force field emitters for about a week and a half now. Uh, Now's I'll... not the time. All right. Well, unless anyone has quick to action or you want to spend uh, two momentum to retain the player initiative, it's now time for our little evil changeling to go. All right. So the, uh, the changeling is going to go with a, um, a very, uh, T-1000 type of move where he thrusts his hand forward, uh, changing it into a weapon into Stetco. Into Stetco. All right. So uh, go ahead and do your changeling roll. Uh, well, let me ask this. How many threat are you going to put into the attack, if any? Uh, just one. Just one. Okay. Yep. Just one. All right. Go ahead and do that, and that way we'll know what Stetco would have to roll. So Stetco, you need four successes on a daring security to not get hit by this. Okay. 
Um, that's going to be impossible. I mean, you have six momentum and determination, I believe. I'm going to roll three dice. How much roll momentum is that? Uh, that should just be one momentum. Okay. Um, GM, can I assist her by like trying to shoulder check her out of the way? I would say yes, but the caveat will be that if any complications are rolled, you take the hit instead of Stutko. I don't think I have a focus, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with it. All right, then you may assist with a daring or fitness security of your own. All right, Ooh, there's nice. three successes. Can uh, Dorset get you that additional Let's one? See. Um... <laughs> Let's see. Help me. Yes. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. So what I'm going to say, you. though, yeah, gotcha, is man. that normally you would get a counterattack, Stutko, but what happens is you <laughs> start to maybe try and dodge or parry the blow coming at you, and then all of a sudden Dorset's shoulder checks you out of the way, and you don't take any damage, but you also are not able to dish out damage in return. Okay. Um, but that is the changeling's turn, unless, John, you want to spend for extra actions. Yes, spending the threat. Okay. So, and, yeah, what are you doing? And then he is going to overload his phaser and mm -hmm. throw it oh, against here. Over so by Dorset. Okay. So that it's kind of in the box area mm -hmm. um, between the boxes and the force field. Okay. So I would say that'll be two threat just to do that, which leaves you with one. Mm -hmm. um, if you give me the one option, I'll let you do a charge effect on it. There you go. Um, which means you could do vicious one, you could do piercing two, you could do area, you could do you know a bunch of different things. Okay. Um, so what would you like to do with this phase blast? Is this more a distraction? Is this more of a a detonation for harm. You know, tell me a little bit about your aim. Uh, he's going. He's going area effect. Uh, he wants to basically cause enough uh, smoke, uh, you know, uh, pain and suffering inside the force field, so that mm -hmm. potentially the people outside the force field can't see what's going on, okay. and will be compelled to uh, bring the force field down to check on their poor Starfleet friends. Okay. Certainly very vicious of you. I love it. <coughs> uh, so we're going to treat this as a control and a security. Uh, it should be the same as your melee roll. Uh, how, and you don't have any threats, so you're just rolling two dice here. And you get the two successes. So yeah, Changeling pulls out a phaser, chucks it over by Dorset, and Dorset and Stetco, you hear the well, I guess everybody hears the high-pitched whine uh, emitting from between a few stacks of containers. And what I'm going to say is that it will detonate in... You know what? I'll roll for it. It will detonate in three turns. So three player or three actions, and then this, the phaser will detonate. Okay. All right. So uh, up next, we either have Kijwick, Jenkins, or Dorset. I have an idea. Um, computer, erect a quantum stasis field inside the force field in this cargo bay. It's an old trick I picked up during the Dominion to prevent sh changelings from shape shifting. Okay. Uh, give me a, let's call this a presence and security. And I'm going to say the difficulty on this is going to be a three, if only because of the problems going on with the computer. Sure. Uh, I will spend momentum for an additional dice. Okay. Uh, I'm going to uh, blow my value. How dare you? <laughs> uh, uh, I forget what that gives me, though. <laughs> Uh, it gives you two free successes to start with, but it would also mean that you'd have to spend one more momentum for the third die. Okay, uh, I will go ahead and do that. Okay. And then um, Starbase security systems. Mm-hmm, most definitely. 
Okay, five successes. So, uh, I believe that's two momentum by my count, so you're up to four. Uh, so what happens is forming around the changeling, uh, almost like a, what is it, a Matryoshka doll, I think is what it is. Um, but basically a force field inside a force field. And, uh, the changeling is no longer able to change form while within that force field. Can it move around? I would say they can still move around in their current form, but they can't like yeah. do what they just did, where they do T one thousand type stuff. Exactly, they can Ooh. they can still walk around and be mobile as in the form that they're in. If they were in the middle of shifting forms, they would be stuck in that form. So they're mm -hmm. grappleable, is what you're saying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, okay, noted. All right. So, uh, anything else, Kishwick? Um. I don't have anything to get an extra turn with that, so no. All right, the so balance. Jenkins or Dorset, you're up next. Um, I think Dorset is going to dive for the phaser to try to deactivate it. Okay. So, Dorset, you go rooting between the stacks of containers, maybe shifting a few of the white boxes out of the way, and you find the phaser, and I'm going to say this is going to be a daring security, a uh, difficulty of four to disarm it in time. But, as a fair warning, if you roll any complications on this, the phaser will detonate. Hmm. Well. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but because the changeling is in a force field inside a force field, they would be shielded from this blast. The only thing that would explode is on you instead, Co. Okay, so the, the, the quantum stasis field is a... a basically a force field within a force field. So will it Correct. by itself contain the changeling? Yes. Okay. So can we deactivate the outer force field? Well, you could, but technically the only people with rank to do that are Stetko and Kijwick. Dang it. Okay. All right. Phaser it is. Oh, boy. So here's the thing. Daring's dump stat for Dorset. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Security's also, likewise, not much better. Awesome. So, oh, you've, my uh, God. you've got five momentum. Yep, yeah, I'm going to spend. <laughs> you know, let's spend three to get the extra dice. <laughs> three. <All right. laughs> yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to. I need four so You can just transport it out. Can it's in a force field? It's in a force field, yeah. I guess that's true. Um, so. I see Wadi just as we go on. <laughs> Wadi is like, God damn it, I really screwed the pooch here. <laughs> no, I'm nah, that's thinking fine. about this all week. <laughs> go. <sighs> oh, so all right, so let me check and see if that's a complication because that will matter. Uh, no, it's a 14. You're good. Uh, however, I think with uh, only three successes, unless you want to spend your determination to re. Well, you don't have determination. You're a supporting character. Don't. I'm a supporting character. Don't. I don't get determination. So I think what happens is, Dorset, you pick it up and you frantically type on the info pad to try and get it to cool down, and your efforts are useless. The phaser continues to grow higher and higher in pitch within your hands. Fall on it like a grenade! <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, well. Adios. <laughs> All right. Well, Jenkins, uh, you're up next. Really, don't think there's very much that Jenkins can do. He would run to, uh, I suppose, this location here to cover the changeling. But otherwise, he's he's going to forego any actions. Would you like to prepare an action? Um, I don't suppose I could get myself ready to possibly, once the force field drops, get in there and deactivate the phaser. Uh, I would say you could, but it's not one of those. Th you have to be very specific here. Like, if the force field drops, you're going for the phaser, but you could not change it to be the force field drops. I shoot the changeling. So, uh, no, it would just be then. I guess just I would, for the phaser. Yeah, Got I it. guess I would move over here and sort of mentally prepare myself for the the task of uh, shutting off an overloading phaser. Got it. All right. So what I'm going to do him. now is uh, what's going to happen here is I'm going to roll a challenge die. If it is in effect, the phaser will detonate. 
All right, you're good. You have bought yourself one turn. However, I'm treating this like a warp core breach in that every single turn that advances, I roll an additional challenge die. So next time I'm rolling two, then three, then four, etc., etc. But uh, it is now the changeling's turn as we go to a new round. Okay. Uh, so there's really nothing he can do, correct? I mean, you're changeling. You have ways of getting around force fields if you're creative enough. All right. Uh, the player doesn't know that well enough. Um, Basically, I'm what I what let me get, let's do this this way. Roll me a insight and security uh, on the changeling sheet, and I'll set it at a difficulty of two. And yeah. if you succeed, I'll give you what I'm thinking of. Now, of course, with uh, Kijwick's action, it's going to be difficult, but. Uh, so it's your roll first. Let's see. Oh, no. Nope. Okay. Yep. So I cannot tell you it does not occur to you. So he is going to. Um, basically, he's going to try to agitate. Um, his uh, molecules mm -hmm. to the point where he could um, try to get through the field uh, with the same kind of thought process of uh, modulating phasers to try to match match the field around him. Okay. Uh, I would say that this would be very difficult, but it is possible. Uh, most of the difficulty is coming from that quantum field that Kiswick erected. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is going to be a difficulty of five. Um, and it will treat it like a normal roll. Um, what I need to know is, since you don't have threat of your own, you can give me the GM threat, or you can give the player's momentum here. And you well. need three of either to buy all of your dice. Well, of course, I'm going to give you threat. Okay, I will I take three threats. Players, momentum. <laughs> this is why we let John do the evil characters because he gives me threat. Mm -hmm. All right, and what's the role? Uh, the role should be a fitness and a security. Fitness, security, four dice. Uh. Oh! Wow! Wow! We might be doing this longer than I thought. Like I always, I always thought like uh, this was gonna be a quick one and done combat. But hey, this is this is interesting. So what's gonna happen is uh, which way would you be coming out of the force field? Like uh, show me which direction you'd be going. That way. Okay. So Stetko, maybe you're you know looking at the changeling and looking at uh, Dorset, like you know not really sure which to go through. Or. Kijwick, I think it's fair for me to say that you're like locked onto the changeling. Um, Jenkins, you're more concerned with the phaser. But what happens is Kijwick, to your probably dismay and maybe even a little bit of horror, the changeling goes up to the side of the force fields that it's in and literally phases through it. And there's kind of that, that shimmer of light as it phases through. But for all intents and purposes, the changeling is now free of the force fields while your officers are not. Yeah. But. I'm oh, go ahead. <laughs> I'm shooting it. Okay. You're not going to get rid of. All right. So, yeah. Kijwick, I believe uh, you're going to go. First, I have mm. to roll the challenge die to see if things explode. All right. So, oh, that crap. phaser is going to detonate. Uh, so, uh, what is the changeling security? I believe it's a three. That's a five. Oh dear. Uh, I'm going to roll eight challenge die then. Cause that's a type two phaser. Okay. So Dorset and Stetko, you each take six damage, which is an injury apiece. Uh, meaning you're out of combat unless you spend two momentum to stay in combat. Um, but yeah, otherwise you are more or less removed from the turn order. So what would you like to do? Would anybody like to spend the two momentum to stay up? Um, Dorset will go down. Okay. How much do we have? You two. have two. Um, 
I will stay down. Okay. So, uh, Kijwick, as you pull out your phaser ready to fire at the changeling, uh, the phaser inside the force field detonates, and there's just a wash of energy, and you maybe hear a cry of pain from Dorset and Stetko, and when uh, the proverbial smoke clears, you see lying on the floor of the cargo bay uh, both of your officers uh, significantly wounded. But now you may fire your phaser. That just makes me angry. (laughs) Uh, But yeah. I'm going to uh, fire uh, at maximum setting. Maximum setting. So let me be clear here. Are you phase, Are you phasering at stun or phasering at kill? Because there is a difference. Kill gives you more fun stuff to work with, doesn't it? Kill does give me one threat for you firing, yes. Uh-huh. And maximum stun? Maximum stun is basically your normal attack but you would have a minor to charge. So you could add piercing two, you could add vicious one, things of that nature. Okay. I I will go for maximum stun. Okay. So let's treat that as a uh, piercing two. Okay. And... So that's going to be a control security. Uh, the difficulty would be a two. Uh, however, I'll make it a three with threat. Oh boy. I'll buy an extra dice with momentum. Okay. You uh you also didn't roll veteran when you used your uh de- determination earlier on. Oh yeah, oh, good catch. Wrecked. I have not rolled my determination yet. Uh what is that? One D twenty? Yep. Uh well it's it's an effect die, a challenge die. Oh, okay. So And if you roll an effect you get your determination back. We'll just do one challenge die. Hey, hey, no. back. There you go. <sighs> um, uh, let's see. I mean, I guess we can just sit there and go with how dare you again. I mean, I think it would fit, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how dare you! I'd recommend uh, also spending the two momentum for another extra die. Right. Yeah, yeah, can't yeah, yeah, so it can't hurt. I say as he rolls uh, all complications. Control security with uh, with three dice, yeah. Yeah. Control security three dice, and I have energy weapons as a focus. Most definitely would apply. Boom. Very nice. That is a total of five successes, which means you get two momentum. Uh, go ahead and roll your phaser damage, which is going to be seven challenge die for you. All right. So uh, the changelings have an innate resistance of four, uh, but with your piercing two effect, the resistance is completely negated and six is enough to injure the changeling. Uh, unless I forget, did I give the changeling a value? Um, No. All right, then in that case, I think what happens is that's how the combat ends, is you, Kijwick, in maybe a fit of rage, you fire maximum setting stun, of course, at the changeling, and the changeling turns and prepares to take what he might think is a, you know, a, something easy to withstand, but the energy overwhelms the changeling, and he goes backing up into the wall of the cargo bay and slumps down unconscious against it. And we are now out of combat, so feel free to move about the cabin. Computer, disable force field in cargo bay. Emergency medical to cargo bay two. And uh, I'm going to run over to Stetco. All right. So the force field drops. Stetco and Dorset are dormant on the ground. And I will try to administer first aid to Dorset as best as I can. Okay. So, uh, for first aid, that is going to be a daring and a medicine difficulty of one. Oh, good. His medicine is one. That's that's good. That's always good. <laughs> mm. Oh, fun. I'll uh, I'll buy an extra die. Okay. Oh, interesting. Ah. So you Oof. do get three successes. So you get two momentum, but there is a complication. Uh, would you like to create the complication, or should I? I'll leave that in your capable hands. Are you sure? Oh no. <laughs> I don't know. Let's let's ask uh, Aaron. What do you think? Should let's, I? Let's let's spin the wheel. Make the deal. Let's... All right. 
take All it. All right, so Jenkins, you go in to start treating the massive burns along Dorset's arms and face and chest. And in classic Jenkins fashion, what happens is that as you're running the dermal regenerator over the area, you slip. It's, you know, like drops out of your hand. You go to grab it and you sort of stand up too suddenly and you knock a container next to you, which causes the entire stack to begin wiggling. And then the stack falls on Jenkins. There's Jenkins' injury for the session. You can take it. <laughs> I will spend one momentum to avoid that injury. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, of because course you may. Tough. Yes. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, Kishwick to Hatea, where's my security team? And you hear Hatea reply, but it's one of those things where uh, the comms are garbled and you only really get, you know, every other word. And you hear things like, Captain, Storm, can't hear, Great. Uh, Kiswick is going to keep his phaser trained on the stunned changeling uh, mm -hmm. while he checks um, where he thinks Stedko's vitals are because he knows nothing about medicine. Okay. <laughs> is it is well, she breathing? <laughs> the uh, the good news is that even with a one in security, uh, you are able to perform a first aid task. It is something they do treat uh, teach at the academy. Oh boy. What's the first aid cat? Uh, control uh, daring and medicine. Daring medicine. Well, at least I'm daring. I, I have no focus because that was intentional. Hey! But hey, you do actually really well. You get two successes, which is another momentum for you. Uh, you know, basic training does its work back in the academy. You know that uh, with certain application of uh, medical kit, you uh, are managing to get Stetko back to consciousness at probably about the same time that Jenkins begins to pull himself out of the containers. And of course, Dorset, you're up as well. Uh, I'm going to walk over to the changeling and basically bury the muzzle in its flesh, its, its body, uh, and just sit there and uh, look at Stetko and be like, can you get me... Uh, can you get some more security down here? Because <laughs> if this guy moves, I'm going to vaporize him. <laughs> she uh, sits up, looks around a little disoriented, and then uh, quickly checks the the barrels. Yeah, the, uh, the barrels of uh, biomimetic gel are safely in the corner. Okay. She hops to her feet, straightens herself up a bit, um, looks at, to see if Dorset's conscious and then says i i'll get a team down here uh, somehow commander and dorset will hand her his own phaser go ahead oh. are you sure this is wise choice given recent experience give me that I'm just gonna swipe it <laughs> i have i've got the utmost confidence in the commander um at gm has the changeling reverted to its gelatinous form no, it is still a humanoid. <sighs> oh, is it, is it stuck in the quantum stasis field still, or did it retain its shape? No, oh, it's, it retained uh, its it's shape. just retaining its shape. Hmm. There's cannon for that, so it's cool. Hmm. Uh, Captain, if we can manage to force it to revert to a liquid state, we have medical containment canisters, cargo rack D-17, Um, yeah, if we can convince it to do that, I, I only know about the quantum stasis fields. That's, that's how we fought them back in the Dominion. Hmm. I don't know how to force it to revert to a gelatinous state, but, uh, I'm pretty sure this is going to keep it, uh, from doing anything too crazy. And I tell you what, let's actually shift away from this scene to outside of a certain Jaro's quarters with a certain Cation. So uh, the junior quarters on the station are actually not that far from ops, all things considered. Um, I mean, sure, you're still in like deck 12, section three, but 
the starbase is huge. Like in the grand scheme of things, you're pretty dang close to, uh, you know, the action as it were. And Jana, you are following up that lead where you noticed out of, you know, out of the session that Jaro's quarters were mentioned along with yours. Um, so let me show you what the, what's going on here. So the quarters you're currently outside, this one here, uh, that is Jaro's quarters. Your quarters are literally across the hall. Okay. Um, one of the things that I would have liked to have done was perhaps to spend one momentum as an opportunity cost to pick mm -hmm. up a uh, magnetic probe, which can be okay. used to redirect energy. Okay. So I'll spend one momentum for that. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, I guess I would just open the, the quarter doors. Uh, is it locked or? No, it is actually open, which is strange. Uh, I think it's stranger that it's nice and tidy in the room. I just want to say. <laughs> yeah, in fact, I think that's exactly what it is. Is you step in and you're used to this place being organized chaos, as in you know the bed's not made, clothes strewn over the two chairs and the desk, uh, maybe even the armoire that's in here. And even if you were to peek into the bathroom, you'd expect to see like half open toothpastes and you know toothbrushes everywhere. But no, this place is like a cleaning crew came through. It is immaculate. Uh, could I check the replicator to see when it was last used and what it was used to create? I mean, is there anything uh, unusual about it in terms of the meal that was produced or the, uh, like it hasn't been used recently? Go ahead and roll me a insight in engineering, uh, difficulty of two. And I believe you do have a focus here. Three successes. Very nice. You get one momentum. So it's interesting, Jana. What you see in the replicator logs isn't so much creation as it is destruction. So basically what you're seeing is that a large amount of matter was fed into the replicator and then reconstituted into a fake com badge that would replicate Jaro's. Hmm. So to sort of set the stage here... All those clothes that were on the floor, all the mess, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, you're thinking it got thrown into the replicator. Okay. Um, I'd like to go over to the wall panel, open that up uh, mm -hmm. using a hydro spanner, and then double check the power feeds into the sensor systems. So I know that there is a sensor blind spot here. Can I like examine the the power that's going into this room to see if that is actually an artifact of interference from the storm? Or is that has that been deliberately cut? Well, that's that doesn't require a task because when you open up the panel and look inside, all the wires are cut, like physically cut. Someone has come in here with a laser scalpel or the equivalent thereof and sliced all of the wiring. Uh, I guess I, at this point I would tap my com badge. Um, this is Lieutenant Jonah to security. It seems as if somebody has vandalized uh, Lieutenant Jaro Tarell's quarters. Um, I'm cleaning it. <laughs> uh, there's been deliberate attempts at sabotage here. I'd like you to send perhaps a security team down here, maybe with some forensic equipment, so we could try to figure out who's been doing this. And uh, busy. yeah, I was gonna say you do get a reply, and the reply is that of a very distressed sounding Tellerite, and he says. Uh, we can try and get you someone there quickly, but uh, there's a situation going on down on uh, one of the cargo bays down on deck 240. That's that's kind of vague, but um, okay. I mean, there's, a, there's there's situations going on everywhere all the time, but they just listen. Uh, what was your name? I didn't quite get your name. Uh, this is Lieutenant Jana. Jana, Jana. Uh, you're the cat guy, right? That's, that's kind of offensive. There are many cat people on board the station. <laughs> yeah, you'll get used to it, you furball. And then uh, you hear in the background, like, someone say, you can't say that. I'm a Tellerite. I don't care. Blah, 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 blah. And eventually uh, the Tellerite comes back and says, we'll send a team immediately. Security out. Thank you. Um, could I run a scan for perhaps biosignatures here? Sure. Well? 
Uh, this will be difficult. Uh, this will be a reason medicine difficulty of four. Oh yeah, that's not going to happen. Um, you got three. You got three momentum. You also yeah. have your determination still. Um, I am going to say, could I tap my value? I'll do anything to prove myself because I actually want to solve this mystery before the security team arrives. Yeah, I would say you certainly may do that. So that would be uh, what in medicine? Yeah. Uh, daring in medicine. Or, sorry, reason medicine. And I will buy an extra die. So okay. doesn't matter if I have an applicable focus. Okay, so interestingly, you get five successes, which means you actually get a point of momentum back, but there is that complication. I'll let you choose. Do I get threat, or is the complication staying? Let's take the complication. All right. So, Jana, you run your tricorder over the area, and immediately what you find is, you remember that console in engineering where you found the traces of the changeling before? You're seeing those same bits of residue on basically all of the furniture in this area. Now, the complication is that as this happens, you hear something in the ceiling. Oh, hell. Uh, security, this is Lieutenant Jenna. I believe we have a changeling infiltrator on board. And uh, I'm going to have to find a token for this guy real fast because people apparently love him. Uh, but right as you say that, two things happen. The first thing is that the door opens behind you and a Tellarite comes in. The second thing that happens is a hook spider drops onto your face. Oh my god. Oh god. Oh, oh god. Uh. And we're going to come back to this scene, but we're going to go back to uh, the cargo bay so I have time to repair a token. <laughs> All right, we go back to the cargo bay uh, where, Kijwick, you are holding a changeling at gunpoint uh, with uh, maximum, what is it? Uh, maximum prejudice, I believe is what it is. I don't quite remember the Judge Dread term. You are muted, Dak. Extreme um, prejudice. Is the extreme changeling prejudice, think? that's what it was. Why wouldn't As... he be muted? So uh, yeah, I have to do it every 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 episode. Um, I'm gonna roll my challenge die for uh, veteran. Okay. Let's see what I get out of that. Nothing. All right. So no determination regained. That's fine. Has the changeling regained consciousness? Uh, I would say that would actually require a medicine check. Mm, I'm fine with not making that check. Okay, then you have no idea. But again, moves. as as Matthew <laughs> pointed out, and as Aaron pointed out, they haven't reverted to their form, and they're supposedly right. unconscious. So right. take that as you will. Can I right. sense anything? They're changeling. You wouldn't be able to sense anything, okay. even if they were conscious. I love that. I couldn't remember. Uh, Kishbeck is under the impression that if this thing moves without just opening its eyes and looking surrendering, he's going to push the button again. Okay. Uh, Jenkins would go over here to cover the changeling from a different angle, and uh, he would, as he points his phaser at it, uh, just turn to the captain and say, I, I do not understand. Why is there, why is changeling using biometric gel? This, is this theft? Is this attempt at sabotaging station? This does not make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me either, but as soon as this guy wakes up, hopefully he can answer some questions. Otherwise, uh, we'll need to know if there are more changelings on the station. Do you wish to erect another force field? I mean, it did not stop him before, but it at least is impediment, perhaps? I'd like to wait for the security team to get here to try and to transport it to the brig. And interestingly enough, the cargo bay door opens, but it's not what you were expecting. Mm. Because coming into the cargo bay is two characters that we've seen quote unquote on screen but you haven't seen yourselves in character primarily i'm talking about the fact that coming in is a certain lieutenant car and an ensign Grigak. and let me see they will be coming in over here stetko and can you sense them stetko can sense them and Stetco, I think what you would immediately get 
is that they sort of walk in and it's like a deer in headlights. They like they were not expecting you to be here. Uh, but one thing I forgot to mention is they're not like empty handed. They are literally wheeling barrels into the cargo bay. Barrels that look conspicuously like the ones in the corner. Mm. Uh, she'll point her phaser at them and tell them to stay where they are and identify their motives. All right. Well, uh, Grigax immediately puts up his hands. Uh, Carr just sort of laughs and says, you're not serious, right? You, you know this is, this is biomimetic gel. If you misfire, we all die. Well, then don't give me a reason to fire. And Grigax goes, seriously. Car, not di- we've seen her at the range. We know she can hit things. Car goes, nah, nah, it's all an act. I, I <laughs> totally get the sense from her that she doesn't know what she's doing. So Lieutenant? either I hit you or I hit the gel and you die. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, I was actually going to ask Lieutenant Carr. Oh, mm-hmm. why are you bringing biomimetic gel here? I have orders from Dr. Dottig here. And he sort of waves a pad. Uh, As you can see, I'm uh, holding someone hostage. Can you bring the pad over here and leave the gel where it is? Car looks at Stetko. Are you going to let him? Yes, that's okay. the captain. <laughs> Lieutenant, I gave you an order. All right, so Carr just sort of sighs, uh, lets down the gurney uh, that was carrying the biomimetic gel, uh, very cautiously and slowly steps away from it. Very few hesitant steps, but eventually comes over to your side, uh, Kijwick, and shows you the pad, like holds it up for you. And Kijwick, I need you to roll me an insight and a command at a difficulty of four. Jeez. Buy that extra die. Yeah, uh, how much does that extra die cost? Uh, for one die, it's one momentum. If you want two additional die, it's two momentum and one threat. Yeah, I will only just get the one die. Okay. And, um, uh, was there something you wanted to say? Well, I was just going to ask: Is there a way for can can Dorset assist the captain by sort of scrutinizing this this pad? I would say, yeah, you could assist with your own uh, insight command. Uh, however, I would make the complication range larger. Oops. Up to you, Up to you, Captain. Well, to put it bluntly, unless the Captain... Uh, no, I don't think he can. Uh, that is, you would have yeah. to get three successes, which is impossible on an assist. Yes. Yeah. Well, there you go. So I'm going to say is that Kijwick, you're looking at this pad. Seems legit. As you were, Lieutenant. And Kijwick go dismiss him. All right. So Carr very cautiously goes back over to the biomimetic gel and then looks at Stetko before trying to move it. What is she reading from them? Uh, go ahead and roll me a insight and con, please. Or maybe even an insight command would be a good one. Uh, difficulty of two. Do we have any momentum? You have one at the moment. Do it. Um, hmm? Do it. Do, Do it. it. Do it. <laughs> I don't think I have anything other than forensic science. Unfortunately, would not apply because they are yeah. living. Wait, I have empath as a talent. You do, which allows you to be empathic. Okay. I didn't know if there's any extra perks. Uh, it, it's mostly one of those fluff things that you take to justify being an empath in the first place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but let's see, three successes. That is uh, one more than you needed, so you get that momentum right back. And what you're sensing most importantly of all Grigax is like two steps away of peeing his pants. Like he is deathly afraid. Carr, on the other hand, is strangely thinking something along the lines of, okay, this is all working out. Very almost like a um almost the difference between, say, a Stetko and Jen's son 
back on Fenrir. Okay. Um, do you want to tell me why, if she looks at the captain for a second and then back to them, why you're transporting the most combustible non-nuclear material in the galaxy in this cargo bay in that amount? Well, I mean, Dantic thought it would do better down here, and the way he saw it, that if the storm, and this is this is Grigax talking, uh, if the storm went off and, and disrupted containment, it, it would explode the lower part of the station, not, not sick bay. Anton, uh, one thing doesn't add up. One of those barrels is almost four times the amount of biomimetic gel I was able to secure for the doctor. Where did it come from? He doesn't say anything, but Stetko, you notice that he's now like, it's one of those situations where you, you know, in, in, in schooling where, you know, you're half asleep, you're nodding off. And then the teacher calls on you and you feel like the most pants shitting feeling in your life. You're like, Oh crap. You have no idea what even the question was. That's what Greg X is feeling right now. Okay. So Greg X is fine because he's reacting without, like not in cold blood as mm -hmm. it were um lieutenant Carr. i don't know i'm Any just following answer? orders you're just following orders from dr dotig you said yeah do, do you want to see the pad i mean yeah legit. i would love to all right. Do you do you want him to throw it to you? Move it over. She's gonna come take it while still pointing her phaser more sword towards him. Okay. Uh, Watney, I need you to roll me a insight and a command difficulty of four. We have no more motive. You have one momentum. We have one one momentum. And unfortunately, Dorset's already tried to help the captain. But if Jenkins wants to go over and try something, I'd allow it. <laughs> What's the difficulty? Four. Four. Now you can buy more dice with threat. That is an option. I'm just gonna roll three. So I'll just okay. buy the one. Um You can do it. I don't think I have a focus. Of reading. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, uh, I'm reading. Oh, Ooh. dear. Yeah. Why? Looks and legit, Stetko. Totally looks legit. legit. Looks totally legit. Totally legit. And we can't talk to doc do the doctor right now. No, unfortunately, it would be that same thing where you would call up to sickbay and you get that same interference where you only get like every other word. Static comes. Okay. Um, Lieutenant Carr, step away from the barrel. Lieutenant Dorset. Sir. Would you take over? Aye, sir. And uh yeah, I'll I'll see about safely storing this uh biomimetic gel here in the cargo hold. Dorset, how much did you say you were able to obtain for Dr. Dodig? I mean through every Seems channel like I had, I, I I pulled every string that I could, sir, but I got one quarter of the amount in one of these barrels. Yeah, it's it a, seems like seven barrels is conspicuously insane amounts. There's seven, gel. sir. I don't think there should be seven barrels in this sector. Well, shortly before this whole situation began, uh, the admiral from DS Daedalus said that there was an organization that was stealing biomimetic gel. They were bringing it here. Chances are they're not looking to steal it from us, but instead probably blow up the station for reasons unknown. And that's when two things happen at once. So Stetko, because you rolled the complication, you, you normally would have sensed this. Like you would have sensed Grigax doing what he's about to do, but that's your complication is you miss this. Grigax pulls his phaser and points it at one of the barrels and says, oh, okay, okay, everybody pause. Um, nobody move or, or I'll shoot the barrel. And at the same time, Kijwick, the changeling's eyes snap open. Doesn't move, but the eyes snap open.
All right, Ensign, I need you to calm down. No, you calm down. I am calm. No, you're not. You're freaking out. All right. Granted. I am a little freaked out. But I'm freaked out because you're holding a phaser to a canister of biomimetic gel. You're in complete control of this situation. If you do your best Road Warrior impersonation, I will give you three momentum. But you have to do the entire speech from from Mad Max. You have to do it. The whole walk away speech. <laughs> and while you're preparing that and looking it up, John, what is the changeling doing? Uh, changeling is kind of biding its time. Mm -hmm. You know, just, you know, it's, it's in a situation. So it's, uh, you know, it's going to... Uh, so he opens his eyes, though. Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Founder. Uh, it seems like one of your buddies, uh, your co-conspirators here, is going to blow you up with this, uh, you know, canister of biomedic gel. So I'd appreciate it if you just got everybody that you have on my station off my station and left. Let me whisper you something, John. Mm-hmm. What assurances do I have? The assurance that I'm going to pull this phaser out of the, uh, the muzzle of this phaser out of your belly and that you get to leave alive. Go back to the Great Link where you belong. I think this that is, silence is in character. This is a this is a uh, acceptable compromise. Where's your ship? Uh, that I do not know. <laughs> the way I was flavoring it is you are one of the very rare changelings that has mastered the art of turning yourself into a space capable oh being. God. And I think that makes sense, given that you literally phased through a force field earlier. I think that makes sense. Mm, it's a transformer. I've, we I've have, seen Chimera. <laughs> I know this is hap This could happen. We, mm -hmm. we have, we have our abilities. So, if you would uh, give me your word as a Starfleet officer, as much as uh, and How holds as you... much weight as any solids promise can. I give you my word as a Zaldin. You get your people off my station, leave the biomimetic gel, and you can leave. Unharmed. I believe, uh, I believe your own officer stated that this is much more biomimetic gel than you actually did have. We will yep. leave with one container. What do you need it for? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Try me. There is... There is a purpose that I think is beyond your sciences that we would be able to utilize the gel for to heal some wounds caused to my people during the Dominion Wars. If I, if I go back empty-handed, you are asking me to sacrifice half a dozen of my kind. I would rather blow up your station than sacrifice them. If you let me leave with one canister and my two associates. I can understand the dedication to one's people. And Kiswick keeps the phaser trained on the changeling, but steps back. How do I know there's only three of you on my station? That is all that there is. I have no way to truly assure you of this other than my word. And if you leave the three of us uh, in a empty shuttle bay um, and then 
open the door for us, we will be on our way. Skizwick, I'd like you to roll me a insight and command. And changeling, I'd like you to roll a presence and command, and this will be opposed. Uh, we have no momentum. Yeah, threat. You could give me threat. I see, um, do it. I'm going to give you a threat to enact deception detection. Okay. Um, that like, gives me the ability to create an advantage. Uh, yeah, I can create an advantage. Okay. In the social conflict. Um, if he, if, if any one of the three of them do anything suspicious that isn't in line with the agreement as Kishwick understands it, mm -hmm. uh, he's stunning the changeling again. Okay. And, and what is the changeling rolling again? Uh, presence in a command. Can remind me, Kishwick is the same? Insight command. Insight. And I think you have pe people reading as a focus, do you not? Um, or diplomacy or something along those lines. I, I do have diplomacy. So if you allow diplomacy, I'll roll that. Yeah, go for it. Okay. Interesting. Uh, one more die there. Oh, did I only do one? Yeah, it looks <laughs> like it only rolled the one. Nice. Hey, there you go. So you get two momentum. The changeling is being 90% truthful with you. Kishwick has a value to turn the other cheek for the sake of the station. We call the authorities. This is all inner monologue happening in his head mm -hmm. right now. Um, we're already in a cargo bay. I would believe you'd want me in a uh, in a cargo bay that doesn't have six more canisters of your precious gel. Yeah, if we if we move on down further the cargo bay, I can put a force field up here, and then you can exit out your way. Agreed. Go ahead. Uh, he mm -hmm. has the other. He has the other two go to the other end of the cargo bay with him, and he will transform himself into a spacefaring vessel and take the two of them and the canister and leave. So I love how you guys immediately assumed they were with you. Car and Grigax aren't changelings. Read what I sent again, John. It's just you. Oh, yeah. He's he's instructed. He, uh, he just has one. Of, oh, I thought they were part of his crew. Oh, no, no. So, there are two so separate factions at play in, here. In that, in that regard, then, the changeling will take a canister mm -hmm. and transform into him his spacefaring vessel and say they're not with me and, and then leave, he leaves and leave all right so we return to the moment where all right aaron give me your best just walk away speech all right it's a tense situation but ensign greg x lieutenant care Right. There's been too much violence here today. Too much pain. Nobody here is innocent, but there is a compromise. Walk away. Leave the phasers, the barrels, and this whole harebrained plan, whatever it is, and you don't spend the rest of your existence in prison. Just walk away. You won't be harmed, and you know that. Just walk away. I uh, I think uh, what's going to happen is uh, you're going to roll a presence and a command. Difficulty of one. It was a three. Your role playing brought it to a one. All right. Presence and command. Um, and I have diplomacy as a focus. Most definitely. Uh, and I'm just because my presence skill is not the or my presence attribute is not the highest. I'm going to spend one momentum for a, for an extra die. All righty. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, Outstanding. Dear. That's um. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh. uh no complications though. Determination. Though. Got none. I'm a supporting character. He's a supporting, supporting character, character, so Captain he doesn't have determination yet. Give it. And this, and this is. Uh, it is an activation. 
it is an activation. This is true. You could give him a value, which would be useful mm. in the moment. I think I think appropriately, if you'll let me chip in, I sure. think just walk away just would be a walk good away. value. <laughs> right. Perfect. And then, yeah, you could use your determination to reroll all, re all of those. All right, cool. Let's let's do it again then. Complication. I know, right? Don't tempt the dice. They'll do it. <laughs> uh, the RNGs hate us. It's fine. All right, two successes. You get a point of momentum, and I think what happens is Grigax very slowly lowers the phaser and then just tosses it between him and Stetko. Not like in a Stetko throw to hit everybody fashion, but more <laughs> of a here, here's a phaser kind of a thing. She'll um, kick it to the side and then try and magna cuff him. Take him to the he, he complies, as does Carr. Great. And uh, right before we go to break, we have one important scene to do. Uh, if you will recall, we were dealing with a uh, hook spider up in the junior quarters. Uh oh. So we return to the junior quarters <laughs> uh, with Sean oh, Conneroth. Sean Conneroth. <laughs> uh, as Sean Conneroth stepping into the quarters. Jana, you have a hook spider on your head. Yeah. Uh, is it possible for me to actually grapple with it, rip it off, and then smash it into the wall? Yes, it will be an opposed roll, but it is possible. Okay. Uh, then I will add an extra die to that. So, daring security? Yeah. Also, this John, I my... replied to you. It was a good idea, John, but I think your role play is what uh, changed my mind on it. All right, cool. I'm going to say athletics focus does not apply, but... Uh, well, the good news, as long as you get at least one success, which you do, so you actually get uh, one momentum off that, yeah, would you care to just throw it? Would you like to actually punch it? Um, I'm going to try to like rip it off my face and slam it into the wall, hopefully shattering some of its legs or popping its exoskeletal body. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll me your unarmed damage. So five challenge die. You're gonna clean those guts up, right? <laughs> there you go. So seven points of damage. <laughs> so Conroy or Conroy walks in, uh, sees you rip the spider off of your face and slam it uh, into the wall. And the spider, like, any time you hit, like, a, a spider on the wall, it just goes limp and just sort of streaks down the wall. And he goes, well done, Lieutenant. Uh, well done, indeed. Um, I'm not cleaning that up. He's a Jaro's quarters. He can, he can deal with that himself. It's, a, it's already a good deal cleaner than he left it. He probably won't even notice when he looks at, well, how all this stuff has been taken away. A anyways. Uh... Oh. What, 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 what was going on? Changeling, right. Um, a changeling has been in this room. Changeling, you say? Yes. And uh, he pulls out his own tricorder, does his own scan of the room, and he says, Ha! Oh, so there has been. Uh, what was this uh, about the internal senses uh, being disabled? Uh, well, and he will gesture towards the uh, panel that he's opened up, uh, stepping away from the Talarian hook spider. Um, okay. Well, uh, somebody's cut all the internal sensors to this room. I, I think they've probably done the same in my own quarters. I don't know. Uh, computer... And he goes over and he runs his tricorder over it. And he pauses, like full body pauses, scans again, slaps the side of the tricorder, then sighs and says, Well, uh, I have good news and bad news. Which would you prefer first? Let's always go with the bad news first. That 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 seems like the best choice. Well, uh, the bad news is that uh, if this tricorder isn't malfunctioning, we're looking at a complete systems failure of Dex 50 and above in the next 20 minutes. What the hell? Pull out his and you pull out your tricorder and read, yes, part of this, which you missed on your initial scan, was that there's a feedback loop building up and unless you stop that feedback loop, Dex 50 up are going to lose life support, shielding, everything. Oh, hell. What was the good news? Quickly, please, because I'm going to get back to engineering. Well, the good news is that I'm pretty sure we're going to die another day. 
And that's where we'll take our break as I do the Bond reference. We will be back uh. in 10 minutes, everybody. Oh. Stick around. All right, and welcome back to the second part of session three. We've had a bit of a interesting scenario where a changeling got away with some biomimetic gel that it needed to uh, save some of its people. And then they ran into a bunch of trill that were supposedly not working with the changeling to try and get copious amounts of biomimetic gel. Also, thank you for those bits, Chubby Cobalt Gaming and Mr. or Mrs. Anonymous. Thank you so much for that. But all of you have basically congregated in main engineering. Uh, you all have arrived pretty much within a few seconds of each other. All of you for different reasons. And I think Jana probably has the... Well, I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, has the most um, to say here. Uh, but real quick, I would like to give a shout out to a certain Dag for donating 150 to Extra Life. Thank you so much. The kids appreciate oh, it. What the heck? That's so sweet. Uh, I, I, I don't know why everyone's here, but this is this is good. Okay, uh, Captain, we have a major destabilization of the matter-antimatter intermix ratio inside the secondary warp cores. Pretty much the entire bottom half of the station is about to lose power. Uh, everything, life support, gravity. We need to affect an, an immediate evacuation of that section as I try to restore emergency power. Also, there's a changeling in Jared Terrell's quarters, and he's missing. Uh, well, there was a changeling. I don't know where the changeling is now. That's more of a security concern, too. Not my department. Ignore the changeling. We got over it. Okay. He's uh, missing? Yeah, I haven't been able to find him. Uh, you might want to use internal sensors. They're still spotty, but uh, that would really... I don't know, take a load off my mind just to know that he's all right so I can do my job. Oh my god, I have an idea. All right, so I'm going to float this past the players. Do you want the funny version or do you want the serious version? I always want the funny version, but I'll let the other people vote in too. <laughs> well, I don't care. Don't care? I'll defer. What about you, Aaron? Just to be a contrarian, I'd like the serious version. Like the serious version, okay. What about you, uh, Matthew? What do you think? I would go serious. Serious, which means uh, I believe John, you are the tiebreaker here, if I have that correct. Um, you know, I'll I'll take the serious one as well. All right. So what happens then is you do not hear a thump in the ceiling where I was originally <laughs> going to put him, but underneath the main console uh, in engineering, you do hear a thump, and after a moment, the main panel pops off. And out steps a very bleary-eyed, uh, fatigued uh, Jaro as he sort of rolls out and onto his feet. Stedko? Can you read him? Can I? You can. He's very confused. And uh, I think Jono <laughs> would immediately go up next to him and take him by the shoulder. I, I, are you okay? I mean, what the hell happened to you? I have no idea. Oh, well, that makes two of us. So, hey. Uh, okay. Warning. <laughs> energy collapse in 18. I, I, sorry. I, you, 18 oh. what? <laughs> the computer's <laughs> breaking. <laughs> Stedko, uh, I need you to coordinate uh, with security to evac the locations Mr. Jana recommended. Hi, sir. Uh, Charo's going to take up a position across from uh, Jana and start trying to assist. Okay. So this is going to be an extended task, and I'm going to type out what it will involve uh, so that we're all on the same page. All right. So uh, your initial diff or your work track, let's start there. Your work track is going to be out of 14. Your magnitude, meaning how many breakthroughs you need, you need four of them. Uh, in terms of starting difficulty, that is going to be a four as well. And I'm going to say that based on the fact that there's a storm in play here, the resistance is going to be a two. So that's what we're starting with. Now, the roll is going to be a daring and, well, let me put it this way. If we're going to treat it sort of like a normal power management task where you can do either control or daring plus engineering. But the caveat is that the station cannot assist you, so it's good that Terrell is assisting you. Now, I have the uh, 
the magnetic probe, which is used to modulate the matter antimatter flow uh, for I plasma will conduits. I will give you an advantage. So your difficulty to start with would be a three. And I also have the talent, the right tool for the right job, which increases an advantage a step when I pay an opportunity cost to get a piece of equipment. That would now be a difficulty of two. Okay. And uh, for thematic sake, I'm going to say that every attempt you do at this is going to take three minutes. So you have six intervals here. Okay. And every attempt takes two intervals, so every attempt is six minutes. And you can spend one momentum to have that, so instead of six, it would be three minutes. I think I, I think I did that backwards. But yeah, it's three minutes if you spend momentum, six minutes if you do not. Okay. And we okay. And there's six intervals that we have. Um, so I will just buy one extra die, and I okay. my power systems focus would apply. Most to, definitely. I would assume that power management. All right. Yeah, that's three successes. Uh, Terrell, what do and you got? It's control engineering. That or daring, whichever you prefer. It, it's the same role. So actually, I'm going to do it as daring, just because okay. it's more fitting. Thematically appropriate. Yep. And one die and uh, focus of uh, starship construction. I'll give it to you. I also have starship power systems, so. I would give you both. Okay. All right, so that is a total of four successes, which is two momentum for Jana. All right, Jonna, I need you to roll me a six challenge die, please, to do some work on this work track. All right, so now you can spend uh, one momentum to re-roll those zeros. Is what I will do, so I'll just roll three challenge dice there. All right, so you have five work done. However, there is two resistance, so there is now only three work done. So now comes the important question of, do you want to do one work for one momentum? And you can do that as much as you want. Or are you going to spend the momentum to make this a lower interval? Because again, remember, you have 18 minutes. And if you do not spend, six minutes is passed. How much to get a breakthrough? Uh, you need five in one go. And we have three. three. I would spend the two momentum to get the breakthrough. I'm thinking about spending all of them, actually. That's fine. So reduce the interval and spend two mm, and get the break. I like it. I like okay. it. Okay. All right. So uh, you are able to basically fire up the USS Howe in dock and begin routing power from the Howe's warp core into the station. And by doing so, you've bought yourself some time. Uh, so let me actually type in uh, some time here so that we all can see how you're doing. Uh, but that is a breakthrough. So what happens is the magnitude and difficulties go down. And you're doing good. I would like to to see this visually as mm -hmm. this is like a time when anybody that's watching, the captain, whoever, uh, Terrell is absolutely dead set serious right now. He doesn't, there's not a, a joke in him. Uh, but it's this... It's this really unique um, uh, relationship that's going on across the across the panel, where the two of them just seem to really work well against each other. I like it. And uh, during this, you see that Jana is actually rerouting different plasma conduits. So he's uh, like going up onto the gantry ways, using his tail uh, to actually affect repairs as he's kind of like clambering along. So uh, it's this rather acrobatic form of almost like improvisational engineering when he's moving away from the panels to create new uh, power taps and the like. So I just an extra die and you have untapped potential. So you do roll for that because that could give you momentum. It could also give me threat. Hey, I believe that means two momentum for you. Indeed. Uh, but the way I'm sort of picturing it is actually along the same lines. My only comment would be I'm almost envisioning like a Circus Soleil kind of thing where, you know, you're doing such a, a masterful acrobatic job that it could be a performance art maybe. I'll take it. But yeah. Let's see. So uh, that is your first interval. Uh, so we pretty much do the same thing again. Except now, Jana, your difficulty is a one because your advantage from the equipment still applies. Uh, I'll buy an extra die. And uh... wow, that is impressive. 
That is a grand total of six successes, which is five momentum for you. So you are capped on momentum. Okay. Use it all just toward the track. But yeah, uh, go ahead and six challenge die. Let's see what happens. All right, so that's four. Only one, or only two with resistance right now. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'll you spend can five. also spend a momentum to we get rid of two resistance. To, yeah, we can spend it for basically piercing on an extended task. So, so uh, one for piercing then. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're back up to four. One for an extra point of work. Okay, and that's one five. To reduce the interval. And one to reduce the interval. All righty. So, uh, more of this uh, masterful and, display. And roll your. Uh, oh yeah, untap potential. Uh, so more of this masterful display of, um, you know, just teamwork and engineering finesse. Um, I would honestly say, if you don't mind me putting the thought into your head, Kijwick, maybe this is reaffirming you bringing both of these individuals on. Like, this is the kind of work that Starfleet should live up to kind of a thing. You're also muted. I'm way ahead of you on that, ELH. Oh boy. Oh god, my emotes stuck. Why are my emotes stuck? <laughs> Alright, there, I fixed it. Alright, so I think this is probably gonna be the last task. It's honestly just for momentum at this point. Um yeah, difficulty of zero. So this is pretty much just don't roll complications. We'll roll two D twenty rather than uh Yeah, oh. I'll just roll. I have a die. Okay, fine. <laughs> Didn't take much convincing. Yeah. Hey, there's the one success you need. So that's one momentum. So we stay the same. And then six challenge dice. Wow. Yeah, you guys got literally one success on and that. And it was because of the die you spent. <laughs> yes, I, I give you that. It's entirely on you. All right. Well, I tell you what. Uh, if you give me the momentum you just got, you will complete this extended task. Here you go. All right. So and don't forget to roll for your untapped. Yep. Don't forget that as well. You get a threat. So... Okay, sweet. So, uh, literally within nine minutes, so half the time before the Starbase uh, from Deck 50 up would fail, um, you get green lights across the board. The flow between the warp core of the HAO to the power systems and the reactors on Starbase October, they are nominal, meaning that if need be, you could run everything off of the HAO if you had to. But everything's stable. Everything green light across the board. Well, I mean, obviously the computers are still having a hissy fit, but power wise, you're you're good. Power communications. Well, I tell you what, if you give me two momentum, you can create the advantage that the communication systems have been fixed as well. I think we should just for the fun of being awesome. Be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. And I think the first message and the first sign that communications is back is Stetco, you get a uh, tap on your communicator. This is Stetco, go ahead. Uh, this is uh, Lieutenant Conra. Uh, is everything all right? Uh, we sent the team down to the uh, cargo bay as instructed. Uh, we've taken those two into custody. Uh, is there anything else you'd like us to do, Chief? Uh, readings seem nominal up here. Um, I'd like you to accompany me to Dr. Datig's office after you're finished. Uh, right away. Should I bring a type three? Eh, that won't be necessary. As you wish. Commander, on your way to the doctors, can you have a security team secure the biomimetic gel? in a quarantined area of the station. I don't want anybody in or out of that area until Starfleet security is notified. And I Jenkins sir. actually looks at Stetco. Mm. Uh, if you would not be minding, I would go uh, guard with my life. Uh, yeah, you go ahead and do that. Very good. Oh, and and after, um, after this situation is resolved, uh, Jaro goes over to Jana and does like a, a frat boy, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, a handshake and tell me it involves the tail. Oh, oh yeah, it definitely involves the tail. Uh, that's 
I tell you what, if uh, if you guys actually figure out a way to coordinate with webcams doing some sort of like <laughs> cool hand motion, I'll give you momentum for it. Not now, obviously, for later sessions, but I'll, I'll give you momentum for it. Well, uh, Jaro, it looks like we're uh, we were just as good as we were at the academy, huh? Hey, who 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 knew all those simulations would actually come in handy? Uh, doesn't matter if they're handy or not; they were fun in themselves, weren't they? Oh well, yeah, yeah, they were they were fun. All right, well, I'm gonna go get some sleep. Uh, you sure you'd want to like check in with a doctor? Because I mean, you, how long are you under there, anyways? I have no idea. What what time is it? It's, uh, what is it, 1,400 hours? Yeah, you know, who am I kidding? I didn't know what time it was when I got under there, so <laughs> don't worry about it. I'm going to be fine. He does a little hair flip <laughs> and uh, heads to his quarters. Oh, uh, yeah. There's a there's a spider in there. You might want to uh, just, yeah, some things happened. Just, Yeah. I think that's where we'll change scenes. Uh, so, Stetko, you're going to see Dottig. Uh, Captain, are you coming along, or are you going back up to uh, Ops? I will go back to Ops. We'll go back to Ops. All right, so we will cut to Sick Bay, uh, where stepping in is Lieutenant Commander Stetko and uh, Mr. Conroch. And uh, Nurse Chan actually sort of looks up as you walk in and says, um, Lieutenant Commander Stetko, Lieutenant... Um, can I help you? I need to speak with the CMO. Um, Dottig's in there, and he points at the sort of main operating theater. Is he preoccupied? Told me he didn't want to be disturbed, but I figure you're station security, so you can break that if you want. Well, I'd rather not decontaminate a uh, surgical area if I can help it. And uh, at this, uh, Dottig, there's a pulse at your communicator as uh, Chan tries to ring you up. Ugh. He'll pull his hands through a sterilization field and slap his combat. Yes, this is Dottig. I have a Lieutenant Commander Stetko and a Lieutenant Conra here to see you. Did you tell them I was busy? Yes, they seem very insistent. Very well, send them in. And uh, Chan pushes a button, and uh, one of the doors to the operating theater opens. Thank you. Uh, Stutko will walk in and get uh, praise the situation. Yeah, so Dante, what are you doing in that sterilization field? Autopsy on the Rigelian. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, doctor, do you mind if I speak with you for a moment? Why not? Uh, so she'll try and like read him before she starts speaking with him. Mm -hmm. He's perturbed. Like visually perturbed? Yes, and, and uh, you sense that he's emotionally perturbed as well. Your presence is an intrusion. All right. Um, I'll make this quick, doctor. I just witnessed over a thousand tons or not. Tons, what was a it? Thousand tons awesome. liters. Liters. <laughs> a thousand liters of a biomimetic gel in the cargo hold under authorized to be transported there under your orders. Well, that can't be true. I had barely 45 liters in the whole station. Did you um, log those in your inventory report for uh, Lieutenant Dorset? Yes, it was uh, Lieutenant Dorset who, well, cheated me out of what I asked for, which was 100 liters. What are you using this for? Uh, medical research and uh, topical analgesics. Well, I'll have you know that the way that this was stored and the it was clearly very available to people who had bad intentions. 
So I want you to think about that before you order any more to bring onto the station. My biomimetic gel is in a sealed hermetic canister. And where is that located? And he will, um, I'm going to say, GM, that typically it's in the surgical suite because that's the place where it could do the most good. And Dati just points. Yeah, Dati, you point and then you look. Yeah, that container ain't there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Stetko. Sick Bay has been the victim of a theft. No shit. I'm going to be keeping your biomimetic gel in the cargo bay from here on out, and you can relinquish small quantities upon request. How does that sound? Uh, it sounds like that's not within your authority to do. Uh, given its hazardous state at all times, I believe it is. Anything to do with this sick bay or the medical division on this station is my sole province. Well, you can't keep it under proper security. So how can I trust well, that it won't get stolen again? Well, I believe that if it was stolen in the first place, that's your problem. It's your sick bay. You just said it. But aren't you responsible for security? Who are these roustabouts you are allowing on my station? I'll have you know that this was a changeling that was operating here, first of all. And we fought well, the changelings 40 years ago. Surely security has been refined since then. Are you saying it has not? Well, I mean, given the state of the art facilities that you have access to here, you would think that you would be able to contain this material properly. And I can. Honestly. I'm not willing to allow a second chance with this material. It's far too dangerous. Are you expecting that you will allow the station to be burgled again? Uh, no, but you know, we do the best we can. Uh, and the best we can is now making sure this is under lock and key. And don't get me wrong, you can have access to it, but not at your left hand. <laughs> I like you. You're all right for a half human, half petazoid. You've got some spine. Oh, well. Very Thank well. You, doctor. I will uh, see to it that you are informed of any additional use of biomimetic gel. I'll make sure I deliver it to you personally before you need it. Well, as the humans say, uh, that's service. And uh, as this is starting to wrap up, uh, Conraw walks in and says, well, Dr. Jochig, I just got the number of Nurse John. Uh, very, uh, very interesting Vulcan you have there. Yes, well, she's not actually a Vulcan. What? What? I'm sorry. What do you mean? <laughs> well, she's she's a groundskeeper. I'm still keeping her number. Uh, but by, by all means, um, <laughs> however, before well, let's just say before you make any hasty decisions, come to me. I have um, analgesics and ointments that will be handy. And uh, I think he just sort of laughs and looks to Stetko to see if Stetko needs him anymore. You're dismissed. All right. So we're going to switch scenes here. Uh, we're actually going to go up to uh, the ready room of the captain, where, of course, there's not Hamasi or Hook Spiders. But, <laughs> uh, Captain, you're just now settling in. Uh, you're reading reports of pretty much everything that's gone on today. It's a lot. And there's, you know, a little bit of relaxation period where you get where you maybe finish the last report and you finally are able to, um, you know, take a moment for yourself. 
And I'm just curious what that might be for Kijwick, because he seems like a very business, business, business person. Well, as he finishes his report for demonstrating the strength, compassion, forethought, and ingenuity above and beyond the expectation of all Starfleet officers, I submit commendations to Lieutenant Commander Stetko, Lieutenant Jana, Lieutenant Jenkins, Lieutenant J.G. Terrell, and Lieutenant Dorset for their performance today. Submit. And the computer chimes and the report is sent off. Is How that long are we? For his eyes only. Sorry, I had to do another Bond reference. <laughs> oh nice. no! Nice. You may have one momentum for that. Woo-hoo! <laughs> the die laughing. Um. Yeah, he sends that off to uh, the admiral. Uh, above him all right and to maybe a commodore who's in the area i don't want to find a point on that um how how much longer are we expected to endure this storm for uh about another three days but since your major problems are i spoke i spoke yeah i speak too soon there's a chime at your door followed by an actual like loud knocking enter and in steps, someone we haven't really seen yet. So in steps, uh, a individual. Uh, he is a Zach Dorn, uh, actually fairly tall for Zach Dorn. He's like six two. Uh, has sort of those uh, ridges or flaps on his cheeks, which give him that sort of distinct in- distinctive Zach Dorn appearance. Um, but Captain, you know this is immediately. This is Sholek. This is one of the civilian leaders on the station. And Shalek wastes literally no time and just sort of comes up to the side of your desk, slams his hands down and says, the hell kind of game you're trying to play here, Captain. I have so many angry people on the promenade. They are not able to do any parts of their job. That didn't lie. I'm sorry. You probably are, but I said get in line. There's a lot of people who are really upset right now, Mr. Shalik, and quite frankly, your security and the fact that you're standing here in front of me right now is indication that my people are doing their job. So let me get this straight. My promenade not working is your people doing their jobs. Well, you must be running a shit show. You're in the middle of a neutronic storm, mister. The fact that you're breathing right now means that you're doing okay. So if you want to wait three more days for this neutronic storm to pass and you can get back to work, you can. But if you want to have this out right here, right now, we'll settle this in the brig. I have to think about it as a GM how I want to handle this. Um, <laughs> this is let me thing. see. All right, we're going to do with this. <laughs> uh, you roll me a presence command and I'll roll presence command for him. And whoever wins will capitulate. I'm not even going to spend momentum. I, 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 I was going to do the gentleman's thing and not even spend threat. So, uh, yeah, he completely fails. So Shalek just sort of gives you that narrowed eyes like he's really thinking about it. And he's like, fine. You have two days. Two days. And if my promenade isn't working again, I will have every civilian shop shut down as a sign of solidarity. You go ahead and do that, Mr. Shalik. And then he stares at you, sees he's not going to get anything else, gives a humph, and uh, walks out of your office. And as soon as the door closes behind him, Kiswick to Jana. Uh, yes, Captain? What are the odds that you can give uh, medium power to back to the promenade in the next two days? I could get some engineering teams on it. Uh, we can reroute power from some secondary systems on the lower decks. I'll get it done, sir, even if I have to pull it in a, a double shift. Uh, as long as you don't endanger the civilians, that's fine. Yeah. Cash wake up. Of course, sir. All right. So uh, that is actually where we come to an end with this adventure, unless anyone has another scene they'd like to take care of while we're on screen. All right. Silence speaks for itself. But yeah, that will be the uh, end of session three. What did you guys think? Was that a uh, 
satisfying end to the mystery there. Was... I gotta fight a change yeah, thing. Good. I gotta fight a change <laughs> <laughs> I gotta find a teller, right? Uh, yeah! Just keep keep arguing with me. I love it. Oh, do it. That's like the best thing ever. Can't wait for I can't wait for Kijwick and Dotting to like really have a disagreement because that would be awesome. I, I do kind of want to see it, yeah. I'm gonna relieve you of your command. I honestly uh <laughs> oh. Just uh I, I'm just not noticing this, but I think what's uh sort of for flavor purposes, uh Kijwick, you will run into Jaro in Penthouse every now and again. So if you guys want to coordinate with that and do a scene maybe next time, cool. Uh we'll make a note of that. Um But yeah, uh before we turn the stream off, again I want to give a big shout out to Dag for that donation to extra life. I want to give a shout out to my bit bombers. Thank you so much. Um, in terms of next week, is everybody good for the 8th? Yep. Yeah. Excellent. Then you will see these lovely individuals next week. Until then, live long and prosper and take care, stream. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.